Okay, so today's video is about Ayn Rand and her views on happiness, but I'm gonna have to start it with a bit of a rant. And you might have an idea of what my rant is going to be about by the title of the video and what I put on the thumbnail. So the issue is this. I am personally extremely intrigued at how whenever the media talks about Ayn Rand, they only focus on two things. Oh, Ayn Rand advocated capitalism or oh, Ayn Rand's philosophy is selfish. And honestly, that is just so baffling to me given that I consider those things to be secondary aspects of what her philosophy was really about. If you read her work closely, her ultimate goal was not to outline her ideal government, but to provide a framework for living a moral life on earth as a means to achieving happiness. So why is it that almost every time you see an article about Ayn Rand is almost always focused on her politics? I mean, sure, she advocated rational self-interest and she believed in free market capitalism, but those were just the means to an end, and the end is achieving happiness. The ultimate goal of her philosophy was not to teach people how to become perfectly selfish capitalists. No, her philosophy was about the importance of being happy here on earth. Of course, there is more to her philosophy than just fighting for your happiness, but I do think it's important to clarify that her views on happiness are far more important than her advocacy for capitalism, at least in my opinion. Although, of course, a free market is imperative for individuals to be able to pursue their values, and therefore to be more likely to achieve their happiness. But what kind of happiness? What did she mean by happiness? Well, that's where going to talk about today. And spoiler alert, her concept of happiness does not include taking advantage of people for your own gain or indulging in every whim without thinking of its repercussions. On the contrary, Rand's concept of happiness respects the rights of others and it pushes you to obtain actual values that can provide real long-term happiness instead of mindlessly indulging in every passing whim you might have. Does that make sense? Uh, again, I'm not an expert in philosophy or objectivism, but I have spent many years studying Ayn Rand's ideas, so I have a pretty good understanding on the subject. And of course, I have to clarify because some people might get triggered that this is just my opinion on the subject. I'm not claiming to be the final authority on deciding what's important and what's not about objectivism. So don't come for me. Anyways, uh, now I'm going to read you a quote by Ayn Rand that summarizes her view on happiness and then we're going to discuss what it means. Here's a quote, it's a quote from Atlas Shrugged. Happiness is a successful state of life. Pain is an agent of death. Happiness is that state of consciousness which proceeds from the achievement of one's values. A morality that dares to tell you to find happiness in the renunciation of your happiness, to value the failure of your values is an insolent negation of morality. A doctrine that gives you as an ideal the role of a sacrificial animal seeking slaughter on the altars of others is giving you death as your standard. By the grace of reality and the nature of life, man, every man is an end in himself. He exists for his own sake and the achievement of his own happiness is his highest moral purpose. So let's pause here for a moment because this is super important. Here Rand emphasizes what makes her philosophy so different from other, other philosophies, doctrines or religions. Objectivist philosophy tells you that your happiness should be the most important thing for you and that your life is your own. You exist for your own sake, which radically contrasts with what many of us are taught growing up. For instance, if you are religious, you are told that the only way to be happy is by dedicating your life to a god, that the purpose of your life is not to live it, but to worship your god. And even conventional morality teaches you not to live for yourself, but to live for others, which can come in many forms. For example, people are discouraged to pursue a career they love because their family doesn't like it, or they feel forced to stay in an unhappy loveless marriage for the sake of the other person. I mean, those are just some super basic examples, but you get the idea, right? Plus, conventional morality and religion tend to get people to do things by using fear as motivation. Worship God or you will go to hell. Don't go to college and stay and work in the family business or your family will hate you. Pay taxes or we will throw you in jail. I mean, who wants to live like that? Who wants to do things out of fear? But that's what most of us do all the time. Objectivism, on the other hand, advocates motivation by love. Pursue the career you love even if others don't like it because it's going to make you happy. Help your spouse pay for college because you can afford it and you love them and you want them to be happy and not because they're blank bailing you into doing it or they're threatening you with divorce. Like, isn't that a much better way to go about things? To be motivated by love instead of fear? And that's what Ayn Rand was trying to get people to understand. Like, 
how can anyone grasp this about Iron's philosophy and say, well, that is just evil. Live your life for your own, outrageous. Not sacrifice your life to God or society, unspeakable. Anyway, let me read you the end of the quote. Here's what it says. But neither life nor happiness can be achieved by the pursuit of irrational whims. Just as a man is free to attempt to survive in any random manner, but will perish unless he lives as his nature requires, so he is free to seek his happiness in any mindless fraud, but the torture of frustration is all he will find unless he seeks the happiness proper to man. The purpose of morality is to teach you not to suffer and die, but to enjoy yourself and live. So yeah, as mentioned earlier, what this part of the quote stresses is that real happiness requires work. Happiness is not about indulging in your whims, unfortunately. Anyways, that's just a super basic brief overview of Byron's views on happiness. Uh, of course, she wrote a lot more on the subject, but I just like to keep things brief. So that's basically it for this video. Also, I'd like to clarify that just because I regard happiness as one of the most important aspects of objectivism, it doesn't mean that there aren't other aspects of the philosophy that are also worthy of your attention. For instance, the objectivist emphasis on reason, reality, metaphysics, and self-esteem. But hopefully this can help you defend Ayn Rand's contribution to philosophy a little bit better whenever anyone tries to dismiss her based on her politics. Remind them that there is so much more that she was about and that her philosophy was about. Anyways, thank you for coming to my TED talk. I will come back again next week with another video because I have a lot of time in my hands because I quit my job a few weeks ago. So yes, new video next week. Subscribe and thank you for watching.